What's up everybody? Today's episode is all about stock video. It's a super important subject because Shutterstock did something very bad for their contributors. They cut, you know, the, our income. So stock videos are becoming more and more important to really make a good passive income out of stock photography. So today we will focus on technicalities. But first, of course, intro. If you are asking yourself, what do I need to start stock video business? You maybe think that you need some, you know, crazy epic red camera with some crazy lenses and you need to bring sliders and gimbals and all this stuff everywhere. And good news is that is not true. Bad news though is that you need to have some knowledge what equipment you need and how to shoot to have videos sold and first accepted of course i have points here like like for example how frames per second subject you need a drone about uh, resolution about codec and all this stuff we will co cover just right now okay so first let's start let's start with question that i've been asked by many videographers that are just starting out what is the best frame rate? 30 frames per second, 24 frame, frames per second, 25 or maybe 60 or 120, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is, this is like big subject in stock videography. I love 24 frames per second because it gives you the most cinematic look out there. And all my videos that I shoot in a studio or my vlogs are shot with 24 frames per second. So having said that, I noticed that it is not the best frame rate for stock videography because it may be used in some, you know, broadcast agencies. We've seen our stock footage even in television. In this particular case, I would recommend to stick to 25 or 30 frames per second. This is a sweet spot and I did some research. What are the videos that are best selling on, on, in stock agencies that are good with selling videos? And most of videos you will find there are finally in 25 frames per second and 30 frames per second. If you have some slow motion, slow it down so it's already like slow. And if you shoot it in, for example, 120 frames per second, which is very popular, slow it down, for example, to 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second. And you will be good to go. Second thing is subject. I already have one video that I really recommend you to watch about our best-selling video footage. You know, like there's, there's so many subjects, it's really difficult to tell you which are going to sell very good and which are not. But if some places are really covered, if some subject is really saturated, it will be very hard for you to sell. So what I recommend is to either have great shots of super popular locations or search for some specific niche. In our case, like aerial cityscapes, they sell very well. If you have like good light and you don't have to have crazy good drone, we've been shoot, shot, shooting for, for years with Mavic Pro 1, now we are shooting with Mavic Air 2. Um, we also had some, some, some experiments with Mavic Pro 2. So all those drones are very good to shoot, even Mavic Mini is good to shoot good cityscapes. You just need a good light, you just need some nice, nice shots, very cinematic, not too complicated, really most, in most cases like super simple movements of drone will give you some good looking videos that you can sell very well. And also like in our case, it works very well places that are difficult to access like hospitals, coal mines, or maybe electric power plants, some, some industrial zones. If you are able to get there and to get some good shots there, really good subjects and most of these videos are you know selling very well so next thing is resolution and codec so first let's focus on resolution well if you have 1080p camera shoot 1080p really like in most cases our videos are sold in 1080p but having said that if you can afford 4k camera and all you already on a 4K camera, it seems to be obvious to shoot in 4K. It may not sell like, you know, every time in 4K, but definitely your portfolio, your video portfolio will be future-proof. And this is what you want. When it comes to codec, it's a, it's a subject that you can write a book about. 
but basically what we recommend is H.264. Well, a lot of you will ask, but why not something more modern like HEVC? Those codecs are great and I prefer them personally, but a lot of computers are still not ready for these codecs, or maybe not computers, but a lot of software out there is not ready for this codec. They are not working great with editing software out there. The other thing is that, for example, Shutterstock does not accept this codec yet. So you would have to basically create, you know, like uh, your videos, like encode your videos separately for Shutterstock, for Adobe Stock, for Getty Images, for Pond5 doesn't make sense. So if you want to have something really bulletproof, really ready for all stock agencies out there, H.264 is your way to go. Should I color correct my videos? Yes, you should. Though having said that, it's like um, I was super ambitious with stock video before. I would, you know, like shoot in flat profile, the most flat profile I could ever shoot in and then I would do some elaborate color, color correction and so on and so on. And then I give it a try and try it like, you know, those basic built-in profiles in cameras with some little tweaks, like maybe a little bit up on saturation, a little bit up on contrast, you know, keeping them um, exposed properly. And honestly, in most cases, the only thing you have to do with, you know, like out of the camera profile, no, not S log or H log or anything like that, it's, it's contrast, you just, you just, you just, if you have a curve setting in your software, editing software, then you just add a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of saturation, maybe correct a little bit of white balance if you haven't done that properly in camera, which I recommend to do, you're good to go. And it really saves a lot of time and if you exposed your video properly, you will still leave some room for other editors to add some lots, some specific look, or maybe to, to, you know, boost the colors or reduce the colors. So somewhere in the middle is great. So nothing crazy. I really don't see any point of doing that because if you have good title and if you have good keywords and if you have good subject and it's properly exposed and it looks good, you know, at a first glance, you're good to go. And then editors will do what they want with your video. What lens? <sighs> It's another huge subject. So basically, in most cases, what we use, we used wide angle zoom because we did a lot of traveling and wide angle zoom is a super, super universal tool. It allows you to capture beautiful places that are really small. Like if you are, for example, in coal mine, like we have good video selling from coal mine, those spaces are really narrow. So wide angle zoom works very well. But even if you have this like uh, popular for full frame camera, 16 to 35 zoom, on 35 you can have even some close ups some details and have some, you know, beautiful creamy bokeh. If you only want to work with prime, I would say 35 millimeters, some bright 35 millimeter lens will do a great job. We also love 50 millimeters, millimeter lens, which is great for food, in my opinion, for some like nice details. Um, I even do some B-roll with 50, 50 millimeter lens, so this lens is also great. But having said that, if you have a kit lens, you're good to go, really. Like most of kit lenses out there are capable of capturing great, great video clips. And again, if subject is right, nobody will ask you if this was a kit lens or a super expensive, I don't know, size lens or whatever lens. So this is my recommendation. But if you want to have a universal soldier, something else that your kit lens and have really good shots, wide angle lens, like for full frame standard, 16 to 35, is a great lens for videographers. Should I buy slider, motorized slider, or should I buy gimbal or, you know, all this stuff? And the answer is yes, you should. But obviously when you are starting out, you don't have a lot of budget and you know like you're thinking what should i buy first so first go out and shoot and and really like if you have slider use it i use it a lot of times but our best selling videos uh besides one are not made on slider and um so really it's it's nice to have it it's nice to have this option to move but again again and again subject is most important when it comes to videography and then keywords and that good title and that is what sells the videos 
But having said that, having like some, some good drone like Mavic Air 2 is great. Mavic Mini even is, is, is totally enough for stock videography. And having some maybe small slider, very compact and light to make it easy to travel with will definitely bring some extra value to your video production. I do like to have gimbal, but we don't use it all the time, really. Because like um, in many cases, stock videography is all about placing your camera, focusing on the right subject and just allowing things to happen in front of the camera. So the best accessor accessory you can buy for your stock footage is tripod. Tripod is number one. And however it sounds boring, it's not exciting because tripod is like, ugh, okay, I have to buy tripod. I have to have something there. But you know, tripods make a lot of difference, a lot of value. They will bring a lot of value to your video production. I hope that answers your question when it comes to accessories. Oh, and one more, I would forget. One accessory that I use with video practically all the time is variable ND or fader or however you call it. So this, you know, ND filter that you can adjust its um, brightness or darkness, you know, density. <laughs> you can adjust density. Um, I love to stick to 180 degree rule so that if I shoot in 25 frames per second, I have a one of a 50th of a second shutter speed. So this is what I like to stick to and definitely a variable ND filter will help you to achieve that. So tripod and variable ND filter are your first two purchases when it comes to video stock videography. And the last question I've been asked a lot, what is the optimum length of the video? Basically speaking, is anything between five seconds to 30 seconds. It's very rare we just create five second video clip, video clip, video clip, because we want people to have something to, you know, choose from, to cut the parts that they don't need and to, you know, pick the best part for them. So in my personal case, what I do, for example, when I fly my drone and let's say I'm on Tavi over Tavira, which is like city, 30 kilometers east from here. And this video clip sells very well because it's a popular tourist destination. And by the way, very beautiful, extremely beautiful place to visit. And I'm not sponsored by Portugal. So it's um, when I fly my drone, usually I keep it maximum, maximum 30 seconds. So around 29, 28 seconds, I stop recording. And this is what I basically upload to stock photography agencies. But it really depends. I would suggest don't do it less than 10 seconds and never cross 30 seconds because some stocks will tell you, no, it's, this clip is just too long. So if you stick between those two values, you are good to go. You, are, you have universal stock uh, videos for all stock agencies out there that are selling, that are selling videos. One extra bonus point. Um, when you are exporting your video and you decide, for example, to go with some crazy, like high quality format like Apple ProRes, which is also popular among many videographers, please remember about one thing. Don't ever cross this uh, file size of 3.9 gigabyte because above that, a lot of stock agencies will reject your video because file size is just too large. It brings me to the point which I said before why I prefer, prefer H.264 because it still gives you very good quality, but file size is much smaller, so it's much faster to upload. But if you decide to go with ProRes or something really crazy there, just remember, do not go over 3.9 gigabytes. It's good I have my wife here, you know, she's reminding me and reminding about stuff. Audio. So should I record audio in my footage? The answer is no, if it doesn't make any sense. So for example, if uh, I don't know, you record like a drone footage and your drone does record audio, you don't need a recording of this thing. But if it does make sense, for example, you know, you want to include ambience of the place and there are no recognizable voices, or you are basically recording some, some music and you have it, you know, like copyright and you can sell it, then of course you can include audio. But if it doesn't make sense, don't include any audio because this video will be rejected because your audio is basically bad. If you have more questions, if you want us to, or us, I mean me and my wife, because we work on this project together. So if you want us to answer 
more questions about stock videos, which is becoming more and more important subject for all stock videographers and photographers out there. Please don't forget to leave comments below. Like I will try to answer all your questions or maybe we'll create extra episode about stock videography. So I hope you found it entertaining and I hope you found it informative or educational. And I see you guys, of course, in the next episode. Yeah, see you next episode.